Abbott, who's holding a news conference right now. Let's Yesterday. listen in. Uh, and that is, as you know, the president of the United States was here in the state of Texas, uh, first in Corpus Christi, uh, to talk to uh, local officials about uh, challenges they were facing because of damages incurred in their various counties, uh, especially the very hard hit Aransas County, Port Aransas, Rockport area, uh, and the uh, desperate needs they have to get power restored as well as to, to begin the rebuilding process. Uh, and then the president was here at this operations center and got to see what we do. Uh, his commitment was firm, strong, and unequivocal uh, that he was going to do everything he could uh, to ensure that uh, Texas will be restored uh, as swiftly uh, and as effectively as possible. Uh, as we all know, there has been uh, rapidly changing conditions in the state of Texas. Uh, while at at the same time, uh, we are beginning the rebuilding process uh, around the coastal bend region. And while we are dealing with uh, what is now receding waters in Harris County uh, and the ongoing uh, evacuation uh, as, as well as uh, safety rescue process in Harris County, we're now also dealing with uh, catastrophic conditions uh, in southeast Texas, and those conditions are a threat to life and property, and that is required uh, that we take uh, measures to uh, do all we can to help protect them. And I will cover part of that in various different categories uh, as I go through this discussion. Uh, first, let me tell you <clears throat> uh, that since I last announced uh, the status of the National Guard in the state of Texas. Uh, I last announced that we had 12,000 National Guard members activated. Uh, that number has been increased to 14,000. The reason for that is because some members have come back from deployment overseas, uh, others uh, who uh, were unable to participate because their own homes had been subject to flooding or uh, damage, uh, they are now able to help participate. Bottom line, we are now up to our highest level of the number of Texas National Guard members who are deployed uh, to help our fellow Texans deal with these challenges. Uh, we are also, uh, as we speak, coordinating with the National Guard Bureau to deploy an additional 10,000 National Guard who are being uh, deployed here from other states. So that will take us up to a total of approximately 24,000 National Guard who will be deployed uh, here in the state of Texas. Now, some of those uh, will be arrayed across the greater Harris County area. Uh, we are immediately uh, deploying uh, far more to southeast Texas uh, to deal with the emergency conditions uh, that people are facing in southeast Texas, and we will continue to deploy more uh, west of the Harris County area, uh, all the way through Victoria uh, to the Coastal Bend region. Uh, we are also uh, getting uh, immediately 200 boats and 200 vehicles from the Department of Defense uh, to be assigned where needed. As you might imagine, uh, the most urgent location for that uh, is in the uh, greater Beaumont, southeast Texas area, as well as uh, ongoing needs in the greater Harris County area. Uh, I have asked for and received uh, an expansion of the number of counties added to the federal disaster declaration. Uh, it has gone from that's the increase is 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 gone is now the total is 33 counties. Uh, are part of the Federal Disaster Declaration. We've added 14 counties, and I want to list these counties so that people in these counties will understand that by being included in this Federal Disaster Declaration, individuals as well as local governments are going to be eligible uh, to receive aid from FEMA. Uh, first, I'm going to list 11 counties uh, that are uh, have a, what I call a complete federal disaster declaration, which includes both individual assistance 
as well as public assistance. These new counties include Colorado County, Fayette County, Hardin County, Jasper County, Jefferson County, Montgomery County, Newton County, Orange County, Sabine County, San Jacinto County, and Waller County. There are four counties added to the Federal Disaster Declaration where public assistance is available, but individual assistance is not. The reason for that is these four counties were not uh, the, the subject of disasters uh, in the way that these other counties are, but they are aiding uh, in the uh, support of the disaster. And they include Dallas, Tarrant, Travis, and Bear County. These are all counties that are providing a tremendous amount of public assistance in dealing with these challenges, such as uh, sheltering evacuees, uh, providing uh, law enforcement and other assistance uh, to these efforts. I want to emphasize something very important that I will come back to several times during my remarks. For the people in these counties I just listed, especially those uh, 11 counties that are going to be receiving individual assistance, uh, you need to write down this website address. It is disasterassistance.gov. Disasterassistance.gov. If you are in uh, one of the counties that's part of the Federal Disaster Declaration, you will be eligible for immediate support from FEMA that you can register to receive at disasterassistance.gov. And I'll talk to you more about that later. Let me talk to you a little bit about weather, where we are, and where we're going. First, as you know, the rain that was received in the greater Harris County area has set an all-time record. Now that rain has moved to the Beaumont region in southeast Texas. Uh, approximately 15 inches of rain have already fallen in the area, and uh, there's more to come. The worst is not yet over for southeast Texas as far as the rain is concerned. Uh, there will be ongoing challenges both during the time that rain continues to fall as well as for approximately four days to a week to come. Let me mention specifically flooding conditions that will continue to be a challenge for people in the area. It includes the Sabine and Natchez rivers. There will be record flooding in the lower Natchez, and the flooding there may last a week. Uh, major flooding will continue for a few days in the Beaumont region, in the lower Brazos River region, where there, there could be extensive flooding for about a week, if not longer. In the lower Colorado region, uh, there should be flooding for the rest of the week. Over in Victoria and Quero, there should be ongoing flooding for a few days. It's important for people in all of these regions, as well as in every county uh, that's affected by storms, that you continue to listen to uh, and heed local warnings about evacuation. Uh, so listen to, heed, and follow evacuation notices. And then, of course, on top of that, always please remember and that is, if there is flooding around your area, do not drive into that flooded area. Many of the lives, if not most of the lives, that have been lost in this devastating storm so far are lives that have been lost because of people who were driving vehicles into flooded waters. Do not drive your vehicle into flooded waters. Some information based upon certain categories. Uh, first, uh, uh, the Texas National Guard. Uh, they are active in 25 locations across the state. As I mentioned, we now have 14,000 national, state National Guard deployed uh, with more than 600 vehicles, 500 boats, and 100 helicopters. Uh, they have been doing, most recently, uh, air rescue missions in the Beaumont region. 
and in the past week they have made more than 8,500 rescues, more than 26,000 evacuations, and more than 1,400 shelter-in-place and welfare checks. Uh, they will continue in the most immediate uh, time period, search and rescue operations and aiding shelter operations across the state. Some information about uh, the PUC uh, and